Actually, this is a very big task to discover the innate uh, limitless potential. Uh, having said that, uh, it is a very easy job because uh, it is in you. I don't have to do anything. It is in you and you have to discover who you are. And so that way it is quite easy. Uh, so uh, before getting on to that, we have uh, almost four, four hour, <laughs> three, three hour plus to work on this. Uh, uh, as I was told, I introduced myself a little bit, just briefly, what I do, who I supposed to be. So who I supposed to be, I think I give up. Because, uh, you know, I supposed to be 1,003 years old in Tibet and 2,600 years old in India. You know, and this is very confusing. So, so give up, give up. That's uh, history, that's history. And I myself, uh, uh, mm, uh, let's say, enthroned as uh, 12 Thai Situ at uh, 18 months of age. Uh, and uh, uh, my uh, 16th Jawakamapa, when I was about uh, 18 months old. And final one is done by His Holiness Dalai Lama when I was about uh, 20 months old. And uh, I have three names. And uh, so after that, nobody did my hair cutting. <laughs> that was final. Yes. <clears throat> so, so, uh, so that is, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, how I was initiated into this uh, uh, position. And uh, my title is very complicated. So when uh, Sumaji uh, said that Rinpoche, uh, that, that suits me. Uh, that, that is a bit funny, you know, uh, when you translate that. Rinpoche means expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Literal translation. You know, Rin means uh, cost. And uh, Po Che, Che means uh, uh, big. And the poor is a, a particle in between, you know, the, the, the. But in Tibetan, uh, it, is, uh, it means precious. So it doesn't mean uh, expensive. It means um, mean precious, precious. So uh, do you remember uh, a Jewel of Niles? You know, this very old uh, uh, Hollywood film? Yes? So, so, so one old gentleman, you know, who uh, was traveling with a group of people and they were looking for the jewel of Niles. Actually, he was the one. So something like that, you know, the precious means that, that kind of precious uh, by definition. <clears throat> so I am not so precious personally, but my lineage is, and not my physical lineage. My physical lineage, I'm half farmer and half nomad an ordinary, a common citizen of Tibet. <clears throat> I, w I was born in a common uh, citizen, as a common citizen. But uh, the, the lineage of Tai Situ is very, very uh, sacred. And very, very, uh, uh, in, actually it's enormous. And uh, uh, it is uh, 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 very scary for me uh, to think about it, because it's so big. And uh, I'm so small. Uh, uh, when Sum uh, Sumaji said that I'm modest, I'm not modest. I have huge ego. I have very big ego. Uh, but uh, not enough ego to, to suit uh, who I'm supposed to be, <laughs> you know. So, so, so mm, who I'm supposed to be makes me humble because uh, because I'm servant of Tai Situ. I'm not, uh, I can't uh, uh, brag about uh, being Tai Situ because it's, it is too big. Uh, now, 
uh, what I try to do uh, since uh, I reached uh, uh, the uh, like in, in your in, in normal uh, people's life, they go to school, then college, then university, and then they graduate. So when I finished my uh, completion of uh, study and practice and abhishek's and ordinations and everything at the age of 22, uh, then I started my uh, uh, duty, which is what Taishi was supposed to do. So. Everything that uh, p previous uh, Thaisitus have done, and also my other predecessors have done in Tibet for more than 2,000 years, that time not 2,000 years, 1,970 plus years, that time. So, so that was all in mess, as you all know. Uh, I, I, I came to, I was brought to India by old lamas of my main monastery um, uh, in 1959 and I became refugee since then. So everything was in, uh, in, uh, in a mess, big mess. In 1975, we don't even know what, is hap what happened in, on the other side in Tibet and nothing, we know nothing. There's no, nobody coming from there, nobody going from here. There's, there's no communication, so we don't know anything. So therefore, my duty is to start afresh the, the continuation of the, uh, the uh, institution. In, uh, in all parts of Tibet, uh, uh, there was uh, 180 major monasteries, 1,022 secondary monasteries, which is run uh, through the uh, through the uh, through the monastic uh, estates, 18 monastic estates, which are uh, the sources of uh, uh, endowment, and uh, that will include uh, include uh, uh, more than 40,000 square kilometers of uh, land. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so things like that, 40,000 square kilometer, you know, not 4,000, not 4,000 4, square meter. <clears throat> so, so, so things like that, uh, there was 18 of those things that, uh, 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 that uh, 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 made the institution, large institution, uh, able to function smoothly. So all of that uh, uh, disappeared in one second. Uh, so, so uh, I became uh, an, uh, a, a one child, five years old, with no father, no mother, no brother, no sister, uh, uh, brought by old lamas uh, to India through Bhutan, and uh, India adopted me as, uh, as uh, all the Tibetans, uh, starting from His Holiness Dalai Lama, uh, to uh, every uh, Tibetan people who came to India. So, so I became uh, one of them. And uh, so I grew up in all kinds of places, sometimes in palaces, sometimes in big monasteries, sometimes in really nice families' homes, sometimes in a ghetto with lots of kids with no shoes and a running nose. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, do you remember? Uh, uh, you know, one fine Chicago, cold Chicago morning, another child was born, you know? Do you remember Elvis Presley? Yes, okay, okay. So I'm, 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 I grew up with those kind of kids and uh, for about four years. And uh, so ups and downs, which is very good for me. I really, really treasure every experience that I had in my life of ups and downs. And uh, I was very healthy, I was very sick, and uh, one time for three solid years, every day I was injected because I got TB. Those days having TB is like these days having cancer or even worse. So, so, <clears throat> so, so like that. So I grew up like this. Uh, then, but I was very fortunate because I had so many, so many loving care for all these uh, wonderful old lamas and also so many great masters, so many great masters, my Dharma Gurus, my Vajradhara, uh, my precept, precept Gurus, 
and so many gurus and so many uh, sh uh, sh shastris, you know, teachers, shastris, yes. so many shastris. So, so this way I'm very fortunate. And uh, so here I am. And uh, uh, for the uh, uh, discovery of uh, individual potential, uh, it is not uh, my doing because the uh, entire teaching of Buddha Shakyamuni, starting from his first, uh, first sermon uh, until the last sermon, uh, which is uh, happening continuously, even right now, and it will, ha it will happen beyond time, because uh, uh, the, the physical prince Dart, Mm, uh, as a Buddha Shakyamuni passed into Paranirvana uh, more than 2,500 years ago, but his Dharamkaya and Sambhogakaya continues. So that way, the teaching of Buddha continues. So, so now, uh, mm, uh, the essence of the teaching of Buddha is to uh, let us know that we are good by nature. And uh, <clears throat> so, when, since I was taught this way, uh, when I hear people say things like, when somebody do something wrong, then they say, human nature. You know, it breaks my heart, really. That, that, that's not true. Human nature is not bad. Human nature is good. Not just good, perfect and sacred. And uh, it, it, when somebody do something wrong, you should say that is human habit, human weakness, uh, human bad habit, not human nature. Human nature is perfect. So <clears throat> not only human nature, uh, any nature is perfect. Uh, uh, wh which, which animal you think is the most mischievous? Monkey, right? Monkey. So monkey nature is perfect. Okay, mm, which, which, uh, which creature that you don't like to be? Uh, in my mind, spider. I don't like to be spider. I'm scared of spider. You know, goodness sake, they have eight eyes, you know. <clears throat> Two eyes uh, is scary enough. There's eight of them. So, so, mm, so I don't like to be a spider. So spider's nature is perfect. <laughs> okay, so, so th therefore, you know, every single living creature uh, essence is perfect. And uh, not only living creatures, every single inanimate object such as a mountain, sun, moon, star, river, lake, ocean, everything is perfect. Everything. There's no imperfection in anything. And uh, even worst thing, we, we, worst thing in the universe, what is the worst thing in the nature? Poison, poison, because if we eat, we will die. But then, but then you know, in uh, Ayurveda and Tibetan medicine, uh, they use poison to cure certain disease by, by using it in a correct way, because poison have power to kill. At the same time, if it is uh, used incorrectly, it have a power to cure. You know, so, so power is power and uh, wrongly used or correctly used, uh, that, that depends. So even very good medicine, something supposed to be very good medicine, if you use it wrongly, it can kill you, you know? So if you use it correctly, it, it will cure you. So this way, not only the living creatures, the, the environment in which the living creatures uh, uh, dwell, uh, they all are sacred and perfect. So this way, uh, I will do my best for the next uh, uh, couple of hours uh, and uh, I will have a break in between because uh, for me no problem to sit for three, four hours, but for some of you maybe uh, not, you are not used to it. And also not, uh, doctors tell me not very good to sit for more than one hour. You have to get up and walk around a little bit, you know. So I will have a break. Make your life easy. Yes, yes. Four o'clock. Okay. For today's subject, we will be serious. Okay. We have to let our body, our mind, and the connection between our body and mind 
we call it speech, but not necessarily spoken speech, the connection in between. Expression, all to function. So, most of the time, we are functioning in the dysfunctional state. So, we have to let our uh, self to be functional. So, for this, you don't have to do anything. Just do nothing. Okay? So, we just sit quiet for a couple of minutes. Breathe normal. Close your eye if you want to. Open your eye if you want to. Doesn't matter. But just relax. Physically relax, mentally relax. Nothing to worry right now, right here. Nothing to worry. Nothing is going to happen. There will be no earthquake. There will be no nothing. Nothing will happen. Just relax. Totally trust the nature. I guarantee you, in this couple of minutes, nothing is going to happen. You can trust me. Relax every muscle in your body. Relax every muscle in your face. organs in your body, heart, lung, liver, intestines, everything, relax. Relax your brain. Your eye. Relax. Let it come. Stop it, but don't follow it, let it go. <coughs> do 
don't consider them distraction. Just hear them and that's it. <clears throat> now you just maintain that calmness and I will say a very short prayer and the lineage, the Sangha. But otherwise you just uh, relax and hear the sound. say this four line prayer which is uh, part of the bodhicitta bodhicit so first is uh, uh, compassion uh, loving first is loving kindness in sanskrit metta metta so uh, loving kindness which means May all sentient beings, all sentient beings are our mother, our father, our brother, our sister. Countless times, life after life. So, may all sentient beings be happy. That's what everybody wants. And second is compassion. That is, may all sentient beings be free from suffering. And third is joy. May all sentient beings always remain happy. And fourth is impartiality. That loving kindness, that compassion, that joy is for everyone. From the gods in the heaven to the humans on earth and animals even the beings in the realm of hell, for all of them, equal. So impartiality. And all of this happiness, all of this suffering, this joy, everything is a result of cause and condition. <laughs> Nothing happens by mistake. Or nothing happens by chance. Everything has cause and condition. Even the kind of unwanted weeds that grows on your roof, if you don't take care, that also have cause and condition. So what happens in our life that definitely have enormous, very complex cause and condition. So includes positive cause and condition when it comes to happiness. It includes negative cause and condition when it comes to suffering. So it may all be free from not only the suffering, but the cause and condition of suffering, etc. So you think about these four in this order, or if you don't remember, if you get mixed up with the order, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Order will be as it should be. You make a little mistake, that, will, that doesn't mean it is a sin. Maybe compassion comes first, 
uh, impartiality comes later, joy comes earlier, you know, this kind of mistake is okay for you because you, you are doing this for the first time. And those who, who do this all the time, like myself, it is uh, always there in order. is meant for the uh, motivation and the concept of what these words mean. We have all kinds of prayers, all kinds of mantras, but the purpose is what it means. So you know very well what these two particular prayers that I have said mean. Now, let us uh, do a very simple uh, uh, process. And uh, uh, this process is, uh, uh, we call Chegom. Uh, uh, it is meditation, uh, but it is uh, uh, thinking meditation, examination meditation, examining. There's two types of meditation. One is examining, one is just following certain methods, and one is examining, questioning. So, question cannot be accurate unless our mind is uh, clear. So, to make our mind clear, we did these very simple things. So. I can't say our mind will be absolutely clear, but it, 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 will, it will be clearer than without doing this. Okay. So now, first, if you have a piece of, piece of paper and a pen, you can write down. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. You don't have to write down. You don't have to write down. But those of you who uh, like to write down, Good. So, you write down who you really think you are. Of course, your name, but it, do, it doesn't mean very much. It was given to you by your parents or your guru or something. You know? And uh, your education. That, that, that also doesn't mean very much because that was taught to you and you passed and you have these certificates and all of that. And uh, your position, you, know, you have some kind of position, everybody has some kind of position in the family, in the, in, the, in the job, in the profession, so many things. But these are just uh, mm, uh, sort of social, stu social structure. Uh, it doesn't go beyond that. So, who, what you consider you are. Who are you? Ok. 
Okay? So, whatever comes to your mind, you don't have to show me, you don't have to give it to the, uh, uh, to the program organizers, uh, you, don't, you, can, you can burn it, tear it, anything afterwards, just for your, uh, this uh, particular practice's sake. You just write down what comes to your mind. You cannot be 100% clear, but you will have some idea of who you are. Okay? So you just write down who you are. Who are you? You just write down or keep in your mind. Sit down a little bit and uh, calm down and uh, be more clear to yourself who you are. You can do that. was done. Now the next step is what you want to be. Are you content with who you think you are or you want it to be something else? You can write down if you want to. I don't think uh, discussions about this will work. You just have to do it by yourself. You cannot ask the next person, what do you think I should say? You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. Sumaji, don't have to. It's okay. Did the, 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 the uh, inexhaustible pen and paper is here. Yes. Yes. The entire, you know, paper on earth cannot compare to how much paper you have here. Yes. Reservoir of ink in here is uncomparable to the four great oceans of the earth. Now, next thing is, based on who you think you are and what you think you like to be, so in between these two, to be what you think you want to be and who you are, what are you missing? What are you missing? When you want it to be something else, then something must be missing. So what is that? What is missing? So this also can be another, uh, another question which will end up with the same answer, that is what you don't have. What you don't have.
I hope you established vaguely, cannot be accurate. Don't expect to be accurate because your today's perception will be not the same tomorrow. Your yesterday's perception is not the same today. Everything is impermanent. Everything changes, evolves, for better or for worse. But it always changes. Nothing is permanent, just like the weather. So having said that, now, you have these two ideas who you are and what you want to be. That means what you have and what you don't have. Now, the thing that you wanted to be, a thing that you think you don't have, which you like to have, is that thing really necessary for you? Is, it, is that really necessary? Do you really have to be that which you are not? You think you are not? be that what you wanted to be is not really what you should be. Or you are already what you wanted to be. You think you are not, but you already are. Maybe, perhaps, what you think you want it to be is not necessarily what you should be, or you are already, you are what you think you are not and you want it to be. You know, I think I want it to be something, because I think I am not. But maybe I'm already. Maybe I'm already. Or otherwise, what I think I want it to be so badly is not really I shouldn't be. There's nothing in it for me. It's just my idea of what I want it to be. You let go of all of that thought process that uh, question and answer that you ask to yourself and answered by yourself. You let go of all of that. You just let go of all of that. And you just sit quiet for a little. That is a very simple, uh, contemplative, thinking, uh, questioning kind of meditation.
which is a very important part of meditation because uh, then you can really have clear reason uh, to uh, see uh, what is going on in your mind and what you are doing to yourself and what you are doing to others around you, especially to those near and dear to you. Okay? So, so, so this, this will be something that you can take home because uh, this will make you uh, see yourself much better. And uh, uh, you, can never, you can never overdo it. This kind of uh, thinking process of meditation will not make you crazy. You know, there's many kind of meditation. If you overdo it, it will make you crazy. Yes, if you met, make, it will make you mental. But this will not. It is thinking clear, clear thinking. Clear thinking. Okay? Now I will talk to you. Now you listen to me. You don't have to meditate in this way, but listening, good listening is also meditation. It is mind through the ear, hearing with expression, getting it more clear, making it more clear, then you will be quite accurate, not, not exactly accurate, but quite accurate to hear what somebody is saying. This time it happened to be me, because you asked me to talk, okay? Why I say this is because it will not be same. All of you are very learned, very, very good people, very down-to-earth people, but after this couple of hours of being here and listening to me for a couple of hours, each one of you if I ask you to write down what I have said in ten, two pages or ten pages and bring it to me, you will be surprised what you heard because, because each person hears things his or her own way. And, uh, and so it is like uh, seeing through a rosy glasses, you know, uh, you see everything rosy. But uh, uh, magnifying glasses, you get everything magnified. And certain things you don't see, certain things you don't hear. Then you hear things. You hear things, you will, I'm sure many of you will write down things that I have never said. I guarantee you. You will write down many things that I have never said. Even I have never thought of saying, you will write down. That's what I have said. Yes. Yes, this is, uh, this is uh, why Buddha say this life is a dream. It is a dream. I am dreaming all of you. Each one of you are dreaming all of us. So we all dream of each other. Good or no good doesn't matter. But this is quite pleasant and nice. So it is a nice dream, nice place. Habitat center, you know, nice place and a nice dream. But it is a dream, nothing more, nothing less. The whole world is, whole world is. Now, get back to the subject. Discovering innate, uh, limitless potential. So that is. Actually, in our essence, essence of our body, speech, mind. Body, speech, mind is all that we really have. Everything else is just a uh, facade. But the essence is our body, our speech, our mind, that is what we have. And then, out of these three, Body and speech are manifestation of the mind because body was born 
will go on, sometimes healthy, sometimes sick, and die, and born again. And speech is mind functioning through the body, through physical expression, one, two, three, all of you, me, thank you, how are you doing? You know, expression. And then the words are nothing less, nothing more than organized noise. But we human beings are quite smart, so past a uh, couple of uh, uh, hundred thousand years, uh, maybe a million years, we have developed so-called language. So, so uh, the evidence is very, very simple, self-explanatory. World have how many language, you know? And uh, uh, our uh, rupee, you know, our rupee have how many language there? Thus rupee, thus rupiya, you know, so many. So, so how many language in our own country? How many? So, so then world have how many language? Which one is a true language and which one is not true language? All of them are true language. And it is organized sound uh, that people communicate with each other from con according to different continents, like, like because of the because of the uh, continents, uh, the people's uh, communication is very similar. So if you think of uh, uh, Italian, uh, Italian language, uh, Spanish language, Portuguese language, French language, uh, English language, uh, German language, they're all pretty much the same. German says, Guten Morgen. English says, good morning, you know. Uh, French says, uh, benediction for blessing, you know. So, uh, so all of this pretty much similar, pretty much similar. There's so much similarity. Like over here, like our uh, Sanskrit, uh, Pali, Hindi, uh, Urdu, uh, uh, then Marathi, uh, Nepalese, uh, all the Punjabi, uh, all the language have so much similarity. Uh, where, uh, where I spent 40 years uh, building up the Palpung Sharabling monastic seat, uh, there we say itu utu, uh, and here in Delhi you say idar udar. You know, up there we say ninjo tujo. Uh, over here, uh, muje tuje, yeah, uh, tuje tuje, tum tuje. Kaise bolte hai? Muche muche. Ham muche, na muche. So others, tu tum tum ninjo tujo up there. So ham tum. So so the the simil, so much uh, so much similarity yet uh, uh, different. Mm. Uh, so so uh, th this way it shows it is it is all organized n noise. Uh, uh, that uh, human beings have uh, developed, uh, but then two things, two things in the human language uh, that uh, uh, really uh, uh, universal, that is really universal. When something is funny, you laugh, the laughter all over the world is same. And when something terrible happens, you cry, the sound of crying is same all over the world. You know, I should have said the crying first, more auspicious, laughter later, you know, good ending, yeah, laughter later. So, so these two are the same, but all other language very different uh, because of the continent, uh, because people cannot uh, uh, travel like today, so, so that where different languages are developed, but crying and uh, laughing uh, remain the same. Uh, now, uh, now, th this way, this way, the speech, the word speech and the physical expression speech, which is very highly developed now, the people who, who don't know how to talk, 
they have sign language and uh, which is uh, uh, in certain countries uh, you have to have uh, uh, somebody on the TV screen uh, during the news hours at least once in a once in a, once every day for one particular major news uh, uh, news uh, show they have to have sign language person there uh, not to deprive uh, people who cannot hear of, uh, hearing the news mm, so that is uh, part, part of the law so th that is done so this this way you know the the that is the language of the mudra uh, in uh, hinduism and in Vajrayana Buddhism, we have so many mudras, the physical gestures. So these are the uh, sambhogakaya aspect, the, the uh, expression aspect, the speech. But this body, speech, both are actually manifestation of the mind. So, when we say somebody looks good. When we say somebody look terrible, where does that good look and where, did, where does that terrible look comes from? How can you define somebody look good or somebody look terrible? There's no such thing. If somebody's heart is good, that person look wonderful. Can be tall, can be short, can be fat, can be thin, you know, look wonderful, very pleasant. You feel happy when you see that person because the insight, the mind is manifesting through the physical. There's no such thing that this is good looking, this is bad looking. There's no such thing. It is what is inside. And when somebody's mind is mean and, uh, 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 and uh, negative and uh, uh, selfish and angry, no matter how perfect the bone structure is, how perfect the complex, complex is, that person looks terrible. By seeing that person make you feel negative, make you feel unhappy. You can't trust that person's face. That person is smiling, but behind the smile you see the fang. You know? So, so, so it, is, uh, it, is, uh, mm, it is the mind which, which manifests through the body, which makes things pleasant or unpleasant. Uh, you can see this from the artwork. The artist whose mind is mature and mind is healthy and happy. So doesn't matter, even it is uh, just a line. That line is very nice. Uh, I, I don't talk about the vibrations and these things. You know, I believe in those things, but uh, uh, there's so much, uh, so there's too much about these things. Too many people talk about vibrations and energies and those things. So it is already uh, confused. So I don't want you to confuse myself. I don't want you to confuse you. So I don't want you to talk in this, this, this line. Mm, but uh, uh, the kind of uh, feelings that you get, kind of influence that that one single line have for you by seeing it, it is positive. But if somebody is uh, negative, can make a beautiful flower, beautiful flower with a thousand petals, perfect, but it do does not generate that positiveness. By seeing it doesn't make you feel good. By seeing it, you can feel uh, uh, negativity. Even a beautiful flower, you see, painted, but painted with, with negative motivation, uh, with, uh, with, uh, negat uh, with bad, bad heart, 
a vicious heart, a suspicious heart, a negative heart, then it shows from there. It manifests from there. And uh, uh, I personally think uh, some people are more sensitive and other people are less sensitive. But everybody can feel if they wanted to. Just relax and stand in front of it for 20 seconds. You can feel it. You can feel it. So this way, the mind is the most important. And uh, now, uh, our subject is discovering the innate, innate limitless potential. Okay. Now, how can we be limitless? Well, if we have no limitation for our love, our kindness, our compassion, our devotion, if we have no limitation, then we can manifest limitlessness from us. If we have limitation in our love, our compassion, our devotion, then we cannot manifest lim limitlessness. We, it will be limited. It will be limited. So, uh, so, when we say such thing, uh, I cannot talk about other religion, although I believe truly, not as a, uh, not as a political correct manner, but truly, I believe all religion must be same. I believe. But I don't know for 100%. Because I learned Buddhism, I was born in Buddhism, Vajrayana Buddhism. I learned Vajrayana Buddhism since I'm 18 months old. And uh, uh, I'm still learning. And uh, other religions, I didn't even learn for one hour from a guru. So how can I, I compare? I don't know. But I believe it has to be the same. Because all the religions are discovered by human being. They say something, some voice came from the sky and heard, but a human being heard it, you know? One who heard is a human being. And some, being, some human being saw something and, uh, and then it, 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 the message uh, the human beings got, it is a human being. And Buddha Shakyamuni taught all the Dharma uh, for 45 years after his enlightenment, uh, relatively speaking. He was a human being. He is a prince of a Hindu Raj, you know, and Shakya, Shakya clan. And, uh, and uh, he discovered uh, enlightenment and he taught the Dharma. So he is a human being. So, it is of the humanity, by the humanity, for the humanity. It is not something else. So, now, that potential that all of our uh, great master of the past possessed, I'm just saying this because I believe. But then I say this 100% because I know and I feel and I understand that is the, all the potential that Prince Siddharth has before he became Buddha. He became Buddha Shakyamuni. We all have. We are no less than Prince Siddharth in potential. And he realized it after so many years of, so many lifetimes, until he became Prince Siddharth, so many eons actually, and then after he became Prince Siddharth, then he saw so many things and he left 
in the palace and he sat uh, at the bank of river Narajana for six years meditating. After that, one fine morning uh, of uh, uh, next month, actually, Visak, you know, full moon. Uh, so he sat under the Bodhi tree, he went to the Bodhi tree across the river Narajana and uh, then he sat there and he realized the ultimate truth of himself and of everything. And uh, he became Buddha Shakyamuni. So we all have the same potential, same potential. Having said that, if you ask me, do I, can I become Buddha in this life? Of course I can, of course I can, but will I become Buddha in this life? No way, no way, because I am not doing what it takes. I am here, you see, in Habitat Center, air-conditioned room with wonderful people talking about Dharma, with a mic, I don't have to shout. And with the water, I don't have to feel uncomfortable. And not only that, I have Swiss Ricola to make me uh, talk uh, comfortably. So I am not doing what it takes to become Buddha. So I will not become Buddha in this life. No way. If I improve by 1% in this life, in every possible sense, my knowledge, my wisdom, my, my everything, if everything improved by 1%, I am more than happy. And that means in 100 life, I've, I will be Buddha, very fast. You know, 100 life will be very fast. I am more than halfway, more than halfway, uh, maybe three quarters of the way. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, two thirds of the way, two thirds of the way, definitely, uh, of my life. Uh, I'm not going to live uh, uh, 90. Uh, no, I'm not going to live uh, uh, 99 years. Huh? No, 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 no. Three, three times will be more than that. One hundred and uh, twenty. No. I'm already sixty-three. So, uh, yeah, ninety-three, uh, ninety-six, ninety-seven and a half. I'm not going to live ninety-seven and a half, and my memory is not very good already. So, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm that age, you know, I will say, uh, who are you, you know, uh, sir, sir, madam, you know, I, I wouldn't know, you know, what is going on, who is who. So I, uh, so I don't want you to live like that. I want you to have a fresh body and uh, I want you to uh, be uh, incarnated as a child and uh, uh, play and be, you know, free from all the, all the knowledge and uh, everything, just uh, you, you allow a child to be, uh, do stupid things, you know, make noise when they're not supposed to, run around when they're not supposed to, you tolerate. So if I do that, you think I'm crazy, you will put me in mental hospital. <clears throat> if I be behave like a, a one-year-old, two-year-old child. So, 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 so I, I want to be that. So I'm, I'm that far. So, so in this life, I will not become Buddha. Definitely not. And 1% uh, improvement, I will be very happy. So 100 lifetime will be very fast. I remember, I remember when I was three years old, you know, I saw a group of mushroom growing on, a, on, on, on the lawn. Take. It will take. But uh, uh, some of you might, uh, uh, you know, some of you might uh, renounce everything and, uh, and meditate like Prince Siddhartha have done. 
uh, you can become Buddha, yes. But I don't think uh, you will. How long did he live? Excuse me? How many years did he live with us? Oh, yeah. he, he, he is first of all, he is already, uh, he already spent three eon practicing Dharma before he was born in the Tushita heaven as a God. Then there, there he saw the time for him to become the Buddha, then he uh, gave his crown to his uh, main disciple, the Maitri, Maitri, and uh, uh, then he descended to earth, and uh, the uh, King Sadodana, and, uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the Queen Mahamaya uh, have uh, 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 conceived him. And uh, then, then he was born, and when he was, uh, uh, he was about 30 something, uh, uh, before that he was uh, already, he already had the queen, he already had one son called Rahul, and then uh, uh, he saw the birth, old age, death, and uh, uh, sickness uh, when he went around the city because his father was told by uh, some uh, uh, saints that uh, he might uh, become, a, he might renounce everything and become Buddha. Uh, so he, father protected him. It, it, he didn't see anything, any, any of these things, death, these things he never saw. But he went one day around the city with the help of his chariot driver. So, so then he saw all these things. Then he renounced everything. And uh, then, then, then he, he uh, went into the forest. So uh, since that day, he spent six years under the tree, uh, Bodhi tree, uh, not the Bodhi tree at Bodh Gaya, but Bodhi tree at uh, Bank of River Narajana. Six years. And uh, so he, he just drank a uh, ha few handful of water and he just ate few grains of rice every day to sustain and he meditated totally. And uh, so uh, then uh, the, the Visaka, Visaka uh, full moon, uh, then he, le he moved from there to the Bodhgaya uh, Bod uh, itself, uh, that tree, Bodhi tree, which is still there. And uh, he sat under that and then uh, that whole night all kind of uh, events took place and then early morning, he attained Buddhahood. So, so six years, yes. But, uh, but uh, I go for six years, I will not become Buddha. Because it will, it will take three eons before that. But then how many eons I have already been through? How many eons each one of you already been through? We never know. You have done maybe quite a few eons already. You never know. I don't know. I, I don't have, uh, I'm not omniscient. I don't know past. I don't know future. I hardly know the present. You know, so even for this uh, Dharma talk here about this very beautiful subject, I have to have notes. So, uh, so uh, I don't have uh, uh, this uh, supernatural knowing past, knowing future, you know, these things I don't have. I I'm glad I don't have because uh, the memory in this life is already, uh, 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 already enough. If I remember two, three lifetimes, I think I will go mad, really. So, so it's already enough. So uh, this is a blessing in disguise. I don't remember past lives. I, I, I'm quite uh, quite happy with it. And uh, mm, any, anyway, anyway, it took uh, uh, Madam. It took him six years under the under the uh, tree at the bank of River Narajana, a rock for a cushion, not a comfortable cushion. Yes. And uh, so uh, so like that. Uh, and anyway, anyway, before we have a short break, uh, I'd like to uh, complete this part of the this part of the session. That is, uh, uh, Buddha said, Prince Siddharth said, uh, in his teaching, "I am not the first Buddha. I am not the last Buddha. 
Yes. And in the teaching itself, uh, Prince Siddharth is the seventh Buddha on this earth. Since the uh, uh, human, human evolution reached to the maturity that we are, uh, so uh, in this uh, human world, he is the seventh Buddha. So in between each Buddha, there was a, around, it is a little bit irregular, but uh, lit, uh, almost uh, uh, around two million years in between each Buddha. So next Buddha would be Buddha Maitri. And uh, then prophesied Buddha on this earth before its destruction by the, the sun, uh, there will be a thousand Buddha. And uh, in the thousand Buddha, he is number four. Uh, before him, there was three unprophesied Buddha. And there can be other unprophesied Buddha as well. But in the prophesied uh, 1,000 Buddha, he is the number four. And uh, where, where is it prophesied? In the Bhadra Kalapa Sutra, which is already translated into English. In Tibetan, it is one volume. In English, it became four huge volumes. Uh, so there, all the thousand Buddha uh, prophecy is uh, translated into English. And uh, now, this original text, Vadrakalpa Sutra, is translated from Sanskrit to Tibetan. So the, uh, the teaching of Buddha, which direct teaching of Buddha, which are translated from Sanskrit to Tibetan, is uh, 103 volumes including the, uh, in, uh, what do you call, index, index volume, including the index volume with history, uh, it is 103 volume, uh, according to the uh, Dege uh, 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 woodblock. So each volume is about uh, 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 600 to 800 pages. Uh, and uh, when they translate it into English, one of the volume become like a three or four volume. So it is huge, huge. So, so in this Vadra Kalapa Sutra is one volume. In that, uh, all of the thousand Buddha is prophesied. So any one of us reach Buddhahood, it, we will be unprophesied Buddha. Yes. And uh, prophesied Buddha and unprophesied Buddha, there's very little difference. Uh, because uh, actually, actually, no difference at all. The difference is, is prophesied or unprophesied. That's all. Yes. And uh, uh, now then, uh, then uh, uh, also uh, uh, the uh, definition of uh, Lord Buddha's teaching. Uh, I have a lot of difficulties to call it Buddhism. Because I don't know what this zim is all about. Ism, you know, ism is all about. I really don't know. It's, to me, it sounds like a nickname. You know, Dariwalla. Somebody who have a Dari called Dariwalla. So some, some, somebody who follow Buddha called Buddhism. You know, somebody who, who follow the, the Hindu Dharma then called Hinduism. It's, to me, it sounds like a, a, sounds like a, a nickname. Uh, f for me, Buddha Dharma, Hindu Dharma uh, makes sense to me. In Tibetan uh, language, we use uh, exactly like this. We, call, we say Buddha Dharma, Hindu Dharma, Isu Dharma, Isu means Christian, Isu Dharma, uh, you know, uh, uh, then, then Kache Dharma the, for, for Islam, uh, and, uh, uh, and so uh, Sikh Dharma, you know, for, for Sikhism. Uh, so, so, so this. So I feel very comfortable using the word dharma. And then also we say worldly dharma. You know, worldly dharma. Which is uh, uh, people, people who are very good at worldly things. And uh, uh, doing, uh, living a worldly life honorably. Uh, not cheating others. Uh, not, not, not being unkind to others. Being fair, being just. Uh, and uh, so that, that is uh, that is worldly dharma. 
worldly dharma, worldly dharma, samsarik, samsarik dharma, samsarik dharma. And uh, worldly dharma will make you uh, happy in the world. And uh, worldly dharma make you to have a good life in the, in the world now and in the future. And uh, then uh, uh, the the Chu Mayinba, so uh, I don't know how to say that in, in Hindi, and uh, uh, in English it will be non-dharmic, non-dharmic life. That, that will mean uh, it is impossible to be non-dharmic, but uh, what, what it really indicates is uh, you, you cheat people, you lie to people, you take advantage of others, uh, you, you are unkind, you are un unjust, then uh, that is non, uh, uh, the, the, the non-dharmic. Adharmi, non okay. So in English it will be, be something like a non-dharmic. So, so that means what you, why you do what you do and uh, the result that you get from what you do is opposite. Because every person wanted to be happy. They don't like to suffer. So they do all these things to make them happy. But, but because they do it wrong, then instead of happiness, they will get suffering. Example, even in this life, if you, if you cheated somebody and you became, uh, you became something you are not because you, you, you cheated others, then in your mind there will be no peace, you know. You will have uh, uh, what not supposed to be yours, is supposed to be somebody else's, but because you have cheated on it, uh, then you will never feel it is yours. So you will not be at peace. You will always looking over your shoulder, you know. Is that person noticed it? Is that person after me? You know, so, so, so always uh, you, you will be self-conscious and you will, be, you will feel guilty because you have done something that you're not supposed to do. And uh, even you think nobody knows, you know. And you can't, can't hide anything from yourself. You can hide from other people, but you can't hide from yourself. So this way, this way, non-dharmic, uh, uh, the word is used. But that is also dharma, because, uh, because, because adharma, you know. Adharma, Adharma, right? Uh, so, 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 like this. And uh, uh, now, all of this is based on one very simple thing, which I already mentioned. I repeat again: nobody likes to suffer; everybody likes to be happy. And the the ultimate of happiness is uh, is uh, uh, when you reach the uh, reach the limitless, unconditional. Uh, Mm, uh, unconditional, uh, limitless uh, potential, fully mature, then it is everlasting. Until that happens, whatever kind of good karma we make, it is good, but it is exhaustible because it is karma. And good karma is good, bad karma is bad, but good karma is not good enough for. Uh, limitless uh, freedom and liberation, which, we, uh, de which is defined by Buddhahood. Buddhahood is not a result of karma. So uh, I will leave you with uh, this, and uh, I'm sure you have uh, uh, lots of questions about this. Buddhahood, listen to me carefully, Buddhahood is not a result of good karma. Okay? Buddhahood, you cannot attain by just making lots and lots and lots of good karma. Cannot. And we, the Buddhists, are believers of karma as a relative truth, but non-believer of karma as an ultimate truth. If there is such thing as an ultimate karma, we can never become Buddha because the karma.
and, uh, and uh, there is no such thing as the ultimate karma. Karma is uh, relative. Long as it is an action with motivation, good or bad, it is always relative. Okay. So we end here for one session. And uh, stretch yourself, walk around a little bit, recover your circulation, and then come back. Yes. We can meet again at 4.15. Okay. So that will be a 25-minute break. And I uh, also just want to tell you that uh, mm -hmm. Shruti's uh, CDs are available for those of you who are looking for it. Shruti's uh, CDs, yesterday, uh, I mean, the first day we had Shruti, and uh, many people were looking for her CDs. So they are available at our, uh, you know, among, along with the books. So we'll see you back here at uh, 4.15. And uh, holistic medicine. Holistic medicine or holistic health means body and mind-soul connection. And uh, integrated means getting the best practices from across uh, the different domains to what is workable uh, within a you know, larger framework of therapies that can be made available to the public. Uh, respecting the rules of uh, you know, integration and uh, respecting uh, the boundaries of integration. You know, and I was just talking uh, to His Holiness about uh, you know, giving us, yeah, yeah. Uh, to, uh, to uh, hopefully get us somebody to re represent Tibetan medicine on the, on, the, on the round table. But thank you very much, and I'm deeply appreciative to uh, Life Positive for giving me an opportunity to attend and to hopefully work with them to common interest because we share a lot of things together. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are relaxed now. So there's two kinds of relaxation, you know. One is just sit and relax, and one is to be busy and do things and then sit down and relax. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so uh, uh, I think uh, we should start this session uh, you asking me some question, which you feel uh, you wanted to know something. Uh, of course, related to the subject, but it could be also anything, anything related to the subject, but can be unrelated to the subject. It will be related somewhere. Yes, sir. In this yes. domain, you also said yes. reincarnation. Yes. We have a strong belief. That whatever you do in this janma, yes. as a karma, good or yes. bad, yes. you get a rebirth. Yes. And so your karma does play a part. Yes. In your next birth. Yes. And uh, we believe in body, mind, and soul. Yes. You said body, speech, and mind. Yes. So could you please explain this connection? Yes, 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 yes. I think uh, what I have just mentioned before we uh, had the break worked. So I said to everyone uh, that uh, this will bring lots of questions and lots of confusion. Okay, so Buddha is not result of karma. Yes. <clears throat> so anything that is a result of karma is exhaustible. So good karma, you cannot uh, accumulate. You cannot do something uh, with uh, a dualistic mind. I do this for him or for her or for them with no limitation, because I am the doer, other person is to whom I do something, and uh, what I do, there's nothing limitless we can do. So all karma are based on I and other, and the action that go a bit in between, and uh, in this case it is good karma, a good thing, and uh, so, as soon as it is involved with those three things, it is not limitless. It is limited because it is uh, somebody doing something for someone. And uh, so, this way, uh, uh, this way, one has to overcome, uh, we say, paramita, paramita. So, paramita in Sanskrit, paramita, paramita. So, so uh, 
Paramit means go beyond. Go beyond uh, somebody who do something good and somebody who do something good for someone and then somebody do something that is good. So it has to go beyond these three things. We call it